Thanks for tuning in today to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. If you're raising wheat this year, we suggest you get out to the field soon and stay out there quite often throughout the summer. We're going to talk about wheat scouting and what you should be looking for this year. We also want to talk about the three pre's in soybeans. For probably the last five years now, we've been talking about how important pre-emerge weed control is in soybeans. We've got the answer on today's show. Well, one of those things that we're trying to stop in soybeans, we're also trying to stop it wherever it grows is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what can get this weed under control later in the show. But first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about growing degree days and how you can measure and track those on your farm this year. Well, there are certain crops like corn and wheat, for example, that grow by the accumulation of heat. And so when you get warm days and lots of them in a row, you see rapid growth. When it cools down, it seems like the crop just sits still. We know that there are certain, a certain amount of growing degree days that we'll talk about here as we go uh, that are needed for that crop to reach certain developmental stages. The challenge is, how do you track them on your farm without doing a whole bunch of math every day? All right, well, the easy way that you can do that is to use the Ag PhD GDU calculator or growing degree unit calculator. But before we talk any more about that, we got to step back a second and discuss a little about what are growing degree days exactly. Well, for corn, for example, what we figure is the low point is 50 degrees. So basically anything below 50 degrees, we're not really getting any growth. And anything above 86 degrees, we're also probably not getting any additional growth. So those are the two main factors we're looking at is a high of 86 and a low of 50. The way you calculate a growing degree day is you take the high temperature plus the low temperature for the day, divide it by two, and for corn, you would subtract 50. Now, if the high temperature is above 86, we just use 86, and if the low temperature is below 50, we just use 50. So, for example, let's just say the high temperature is 86, and the low temperature is 50 for a day. We'd add the 86 plus the 50 to get 136. Then you divide it by two to get 68. Then you take 68 minus 50, and you would have 18 growing degree days for that particular day. With corn, for example, we figure it takes about 100 growing degree days or growing degree units to get that corn out of the ground. So by Darren's math there on the 86 and 50, you think, oh boy, we're up to 86. It's nice and warm. The corn's going to pop out of the ground. No, with our math and, and running the GDU calculator, you're going to find it's probably still going to take you six days, even with those kind of temperatures, to get that corn popping out of the ground. When you get to the middle of the summer though, growing degree day accumulation becomes pretty rapid because the nighttime temperatures aren't falling so low in most cases. So let's say for this example, the high temperature for the day is 86, the low temperature is 74. When you add those two together, that's 160. Divide that by two, that's 80, and then subtract 50, you've got 30 growing degree days, uh, which would be a much more rapid accumulation throughout that part of the season. All right, so we talked already about the high being 86 and the low being 50, and, and those are the highest numbers and the lowest numbers that we're going to use in our calculation, but it can be different depending on the crop. So anyway, with this GDU calculator, the Ag PhD GDU calculator, what you're going to do is plug in your zip code, you're going to put in whatever your planting date was or whatever date you want to start calculating uh, this, this growing degree unit thing. And then you can put in whether we're talking corn or wheat, and then you can track it after that point. The other cool part is you can put it in field by field. So let's say, hey, I got two fields planted today, but then it rained and it was a week later before I got back and planted the next couple of fields. Well, you can put a planting date in for each field. That way you can track them as you go. Knowing your growing degree units is important on your farm, but so is knowing what weeds you have out in your field. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. 
Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Side dressing nitrogen? Applying nitrogen over the row boosts nitrogen uptake and efficiency. 360 Y Drop places nitrogen at the base of the plant, not like Coulter systems that put it down the center of the row. With Y Drop, a small amount of moisture moves nitrogen into the root zone for rapid uptake. Getting more bushels out of your nitrogen investment is important. 360 Y Drop lets you apply nitrogen later in the season so you know exactly how much N is needed to finish the crop strong. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express end cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. One of the best things that's happened for farmers here in just the last couple of years has been the launch of Extend Soybean. So now if you've got Roundup resistant weeds, you have another tool to use post-emerge. But that said, even with Extend Beans, even with Liberty Beans, you still want to use a good pre-emerge herbicide program. If you're staying Roundup 2 beans, we strongly encourage you use the best pre-emerge herbicide program. And that's what we want to talk about today in what we call three pre's. Weed control on soybeans has really never been easy because you have a broadleaf crop and the tough weeds to fight are the broadleaf weeds. Post-emerge, there have been a few options over the years that have been effective and like Brian just mentioned, we've got Liberty now uh, and products like Ingenia or Extendamax that we can use in the dicamba tolerant beans. But still, that's a pretty small amount of different products we have to choose from. The real key to getting good broadleaf control is to start off pre-emerge and stop most of the broadleaves before they even emerge from the ground. So when we look at our pre-emerge herbicide choices, there are three chemical families that work very well pre-emerge that we can't even use post-emerge. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. They are the best products for control at this time, and we aren't giving up any options later on in the season. So when Darren said we can't use these modes of action post-emerge, we actually can use one of them post-emerge, PPO, but we can't use the exact products that we would want to use pre. So for example, PPO, post-emerge, you start thinking about Cobra, resource, those types of products, but pre-emerge, what we would encourage you to use is either Valor or Authority. Use one of those products pre-emerge. They're awesome. They are really good on Palmer pigweed, on water hemp, on kochia, lamb's quarters, even ragweed. Okay, in addition to that, we would encourage you to take a look at the yellows, you know, the old yellows, I'm talking trifluralin, prowl, sonalan, and then also metribuzin. So those are our three pre's. It's either Valor or Authority, either prowl, trifluralin, or sonalan, and then metribuzin. So you've got three different modes of action, all use pre-emerge, they can all be thrown in the same tank together. Almost all these products can be used in no-till, definitely they can all be used in conventional till, and again, when you put all three of them together, you're going to have such good activity on these Roundup-resistant weeds. Almost any Roundup-resistant weed I can think of, 
you're going to get 99.9% .9 control. The same can't be said with almost any other pre-emerge combination in soybeans. The key here, as Brian said, is to get these products out pre-emerge and get some rain on them to get them activated. Now, if you're in the Mid-South and you say, the resistant weeds are just terrible. If I don't get a good pre down, I'm in big trouble. Then get your pre on, get your rainfall, then plant. That's the safe way to play it. Now, if you say, ah, it's gonna rain for sure in a couple of days here, no problem. Fine, you can take a chance. But again, we don't have many rescue options, so we've gotta do a good job with these pre's. If you don't get some moisture on them immediately, uh, let's say that you till in your trifluralin and metribuzin and, uh, and authority or valor, that's okay. Uh, if they don't even work right away, that's fine. Uh, they are going to work once they get some rain. It's just that you're going to get that flush of weeds started and you may have to come in with your Liberty or your Extendamax or whatever you're spraying earlier in the season to get those weeds under control. Let's talk about rates of these pre's just a little bit. The one I want to get to especially is metribuzin. I run into a lot of farmers that say, well, I can't use metribuzin. I have sandy soil or I have really high pH soil. Just metribuzin is completely out. All right, first of all, if you have very sandy soil, I'm talking about less than five CEC, then I get it. You're concerned about metribuzin. You could probably still sneak by with a very low rate, but maybe play it safe and not have any metribuzin. However, on 98% of all soybean ground, it's above a five CEC. So for all of you, what I would suggest is using at least some metribuzin on your farm. Now, if you have more than a 7.4 pH, your pH is 7.8, it's 8, it's 8.2, whatever. Anything above 7.4, I'm almost immediately going to cut the rate of metribuzin. Just so you understand, in most soils, the labeled rate of metribuzin is actually two-thirds of a pound. Two-thirds of a pound. Well, for most people, we're recommending one-third of a pound, so we're already talking a half rate. And the cost on that's only around four bucks. It's dirt cheap now. If you have a pH above 7.4, I would suggest immediately cutting that rate in half. So we would be down to one-sixth of a pound. It, at one-sixth of a pound, you're only talking $2 an acre. The risk of any crop injury is extremely low. You're only running a one-quarter rate. That's it. So for most guys in high pH soils, that's what we see them doing, only investing a couple dollars. And metribuzin still in those high pH soils is going to work just as good at that low rate as for the low pH guys using a higher rate, simply because metribuzin is more active in high pH soils. One other thing I want to point out is a lot of the products here that we've talked about come in premixes, especially when you look at Valor and Authority. There's often a second product that's mixed with them. Now, in some cases, like Authority MTZ, you get the Metribuzin and the Authority in the same package. That's kind of nice, but like Brian was saying, with the Metribuzin rate, you may want to vary that depending on what kind of soil you have. And now, all of a sudden, when you buy the premix, well, if you need to cut the Metribuzin rate, you're actually going to have to cut the Authority rate a little bit, too. So you want to watch out for that. The other thing with the combination products, there's a lot of the post-emerge options that you do have that may come pre-mixed in one of these pre-emerge herbicides. So when you look at products like Pursuit and First Rate and Flexstar, you can often find those mixed right in with one of these pre's. We'd prefer not to use those blends if at all possible. That way you save those products for a post-emerge rescue type situation. Well, once again, there are a lot of pre-emerge herbicides that you can pick for your soybeans this year. But we would just really encourage you, hey, if you want the best weed control for as little money as possible, consider using these three modes of action pre-emerge. Again, Metribuzin, a PPO, either Valor or Authority, and then one of the yellows, we're talking Trifluralin, Sonalan, or Prowl. Put all three things together in the same tank. You should be in great shape this year for weed control, especially with Roundup resistant weeds. And for the weeds that are already up, weed identification is critical. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. 
We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. One of the biggest yield limiting factors on farms is even crop emergence. And only one closing wheel will get your growing season started right. Furrow Cruiser spiked closing wheels from Copperhead Ag are proven to yield better than standard rubber tire and cast iron closing wheels in all conditions. With yield gains that give you a return on investment the first season, there's no reason to run a standard closing system again. Visit CopperheadAG.com today to get your 2017 growing season started right. When it comes to scouting your wheat field, there are a lot of things you can do. Obviously, the whole key is just being out in the field more often. But we especially wanted to talk a little about tissue testing today, about diseases, maybe about some insects. So a number of things that you could be looking for right now in your wheat. Let me start with the easy one here, insects. All throughout the season, as soon as that wheat is up, you need to be out there looking on a weekly basis for various insects that may be coming in. Now, if you hear about bugs in your area, certainly that prompts uh, immediate scouting uh, demand for you. But otherwise, have a regular schedule where you're going through all your fields, bring a sweep net with you and sweep as you're moving through that field just to see what you find. Oftentimes, if we're just looking, we don't always see the bugs that are out there. They're, they're hanging on the plant very low or they're on the underside of leaves, those kinds of things. But a sweep net can expose what's in the field. And then when you look at the treatment options this year, the insecticides have just come way down in price. And you may say, well, I'd like to wait a couple weeks because I'm gonna try and time it with a fungicide application. You can't do that. When insecticides may cost as little as $2 an acre, if you've got some problem insects that are robbing yield, we can't afford to give up those bushels this year. I mentioned diseases a little bit earlier and scouting for disease in your field. Here's one of the most common mistakes I see guys making all the time. They try to scout for disease. And you might say, well, wait a second, isn't that exactly what I'm supposed to do is look and see if I have disease? No, it's not. Because by the time you see disease, you've already missed out on a lot of your potential gains. Your yield has already been cut if you see disease, and I mean even an inkling of disease in your field. You're already too late. Here's my whole point. Fungicide prices have crashed. Okay, Darren talks about insecticide going down. Um, insecticide's been dirt cheap for five years. Fungicide prices, though, they have really come down in the last three years. So you can expect to pay half of what you did three years ago for a fungicide. And there are some fungicides that are now as low as two, three dollars an acre. It's so inexpensive. I just encourage you automatically spray with herbicide and automatically spray at heading timing because the heading application you can go for as little as two bucks for a full rate of generic folicure. And then the other timing you might consider is the one that's in between, right at flag leaf. Flag leaf timing from what we have seen over the years very often is the highest yielding treatment that there is. So in other words, I can spray at herbicide timing, I can spray at flag leaf, I can spray at heading, but boy, it's that flag leaf timing that in most cases, that's the one that pays you back the most. Really quickly on the fungicides, coverage is critical. You have to cover the leaves in order to protect them. And that coverage is really only gonna last for two weeks to maybe three weeks. Also, new leaves that come out after you spray are not going to be protected. 
That's why we have to do multiple applications throughout the season. Obviously, when you're walking through your fields, you need to look for weeds or any other issues that you have out there. But we would really encourage you, at least in a few spots on your farm, pull plant tissue samples. Pull them every Monday morning from a few spots. Take the same spot every single week. Do that over a period of about eight weeks or so. And you'll learn an awful lot about your field and about your crop. The other thing you want to watch for in terms of nutrients is nitrogen management. So make sure that when you're getting ready to put on that extra application or that last application of nitrogen, go out and do a soil test. It only costs about five bucks. Pull a soil test, see what you've got for a nitrate level. We would suggest pulling a sample from 24 inches. That way you've got a good picture of what your root system can get to this year. Well, again, when it comes to scouting, the key is be out in your field a lot and then take a real hard look at, hey, I know that the price of wheat is not real great, but I also know that the price of a lot of these inputs has come down so much, it's much easier to afford a lot of these things. It's much easier to see a lot of these things giving you a good ROI this year. Well, if you see our Wheat of the Week in your wheat field, you certainly have to get this one under control. It's a big yield robber. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Wheat of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our weed of the week is tansy mustard. It's one of those winter annual weeds and also sometimes it gets started very, very early in the spring. So oftentimes this is gonna be one of the bigger weeds that you're out after when you're first spraying herbicide in your weed this spring. Yeah, so the bad news is this weed could be very big already by this time of year. The good news is there are a lot of herbicides that are outstanding on this weed and we really don't see any resistance like we do with some other weeds. Well, let's start with wheat because this is one of the crops where we really fight this weed. The ALS herbicides do a pretty good job. So if you're starting yeah. with Prepare Down, uh, it's going to have some pretty decent activity on mustards. Of course, you could use Sharpen Down too. It costs a little bit more money, but it's got great broadleaf activity. Yeah, post-emerge, I would probably lean toward Husky, but if you want to use Wide Match, I'd throw in one of the ALS or SU herbicides, sulfonylurea herbicides, and that will definitely help you. In soybeans, our three pre strategy we outlined earlier in the show is very important. I really like Metro Tribuzin in the pre, also Valorant Authority. Then post-emerge, if you're using dicamba soybeans, you've got Extendamax or Ingenia that work very well. Roundup is okay, and so is Liberty. Almost anything in corn is going to get this weed stopped, but you know, one other thing that we'd like to talk about quite often is how about tillage? For a weed that's going to come up real early in the year, you could go out and do tillage if you want to. I'm not saying that's the only method, but that's certainly a method that you could use on your farm that costs almost nothing. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, Tansy Mustard, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Sometimes getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older, conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head-to-head -head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes 
creating microscopic farm hands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season. Protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farm hands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Get out of the tractor. I'll explain why in today's Iron Talk. Planting season is in full swing in the upper Midwest, but don't spend too much time in the tractor. You need to get out and check things in the soil to see exactly what you're doing. Here are three things to check while there is still time. Number one, tillage floor. Sweep away the top few inches you just tilled up and make sure there's an even floor under the tillage. If not, make adjustments to your tillage tool so you create an equal environment for every seed. Now, it may only take 15 to 30 minutes to get everything set just right. If it saves you from something that costs you even one bushel across a thousand acres, at $3.50 corn, that's a job that pays you at least $7,000 per hour. Did it catch your attention? Yes, getting out of the tractor could be worth $7,000 an hour. Here's another thing you should be checking. Seed bed conditions. Your seed bed should be crumbly and not too fluffy or too sticky. Seed to soil contact will be critical for top yields and a great start. If the soil's not fit, it's way too early to mud a crop in. Wait a few days until things get better. Now, if you farm for more than a few years, you know how much this can pay you sometimes. Seed depth is next. This has been proven over and over again. If your seed depth isn't the same for every seed in the field when you're planting corn, you will not maximize yield. In fact, you will lose a lot of yield. Plants that emerge several days later produce much smaller ears than the plants that emerge together on the first day. This isn't a one bushel per acre kind of payback. It may well be a 20 bushel or more difference if your planting depth is highly variable. So get out and check this often. I know you're hustling to get everything done timely this year, but I encourage you to get out of the tractor more often and check on things to save yourself the trouble of fixing them later and to give your fields the best chance at making a tidy profit this year. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a quick till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. We're glad you joined us today for Ag PhD. Before we go, we just wanted to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. If you're looking for more agronomic information, go to Sirius XM channel 147 and catch us each weekday at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.